Review copy provided by Nintendo. Cadence of Hyrule is a special game for so many reasons. It's the follow-up to the indie hit Crypt of the Necrodancer and a collaboration between an indie developer and Nintendo. Unlike the initial flair that the internet experienced when Link and Zelda were announced as playable characters, I just wanted to see if this game was great beyond just having the Nintendo IP as a part of it. After one and a half playthroughs, I'm happily surprised to say it feels like a match made in heaven. Taking place after the events of Crypt of the Necrodancer, Cadence of Hyrule takes place in the Kingdom of Hyrule. An evil man named Octavo uses the Golden Loot to put the King of Hyrule, along with Zelda and Link, to sleep. With the Kingdom's guard gone, Octavo is left in control, raining destruction over the once peaceful land. At the exact same time, our heroine, Cadence, is mysteriously transported to Hyrule. It's here that she must wake up Link and Zelda, collect the four mystical instruments hidden around Hyrule, and put a stop to Octavo once and for all. As a story that mixes together two different IPs, Cadence of Hyrule does a good job at balancing both worlds into one. It infuses easter eggs and features from both games to make something feel new rather than just one game featuring the other's elements. More importantly, it feels like something that naturally fits together as opposed to a shoehorned in IP integration for the sake of just selling something with brand recognition. In fact, I think it goes to show that Nintendo themselves truly did just want to wait for the perfect collaboration, regardless if that partner was indie or AAA. Upon starting the adventure, we're quickly put into the shoes of Cadence who really only plays their big role during the introduction of the game. You're given the option to wake up Link or Zelda playing as that character and then leaving the other to be woken up during the campaign. Each character has features that they share but also are unique to each other. Link for example can hold a shield letting him reflect projectiles. Zelda on the other hand can use Din's fire to launch fireball spells at a distance, though at the cost of her stamina gauge. These elements keep both characters feeling unique while still being completely competent choices for first time character playthroughs. Once unlocking the other, you can even have a friend join you for a co-op campaign. By the way, yes you can play this with a single Joy-Con if you want to. I actually recommend using the Joy-Con pair because the D-pad on the Pro Controller can have a bit of a miss input sometimes. Accurate D-pad movements are necessary for Cadence of Hyrule because even though it takes place in Hyrule and has you playing as either Link or Zelda, the gameplay is very much Crypt of the Necrodancer. At the bottom of the screen is a metronome that shows the beat of the song in the background. You'll have to sync up all your moves and actions to that beat. Otherwise, you'll just be punished with a missed beat and experience a short stun. That beat also plays a part in all the enemies too. Enemies move along to the beat and each one has a unique pattern or animation. For example, some goblins will prepare a sword slash and then swipe away while others just might attack right away. Some enemies have a weak point behind them while others don't even show themselves unless you're at a certain distance and match up with the beat. All of this plays back to the beat of the song being played. That means you'll be dancing along to the song in order to just do about anything. These songs also change up the beat variation, adding for some extra challenge and strategy to the gameplay. However, if you just prefer to get through the game faster without the added challenge, then you can toggle on the fixed beat mode that maintains a constant beat throughout the campaign. Back to the gameplay, the world of Hyrule is procedurally generated, featuring different layouts for rooms. Sure, the goal and the general premise of the campaign stays the same, but once you finish the 5-6 hour story, you can quickly just jump back in for a refreshed second playthrough. The Kingdom of Hyrule is broken up into four general areas, hiding away four bosses protecting the instruments needed to take on Octavo. Exploring the kingdom, you'll find all sorts of familiar Hyrule areas and characters, mixing together with the gameplay of Necrodancer. Lost Woods, for example, is charmingly recreated here as a maze that you'll have to figure out before entering a hidden away dungeon. These dungeons are also randomly generated inside, so while the contents of them have a fixed element to them, their layouts are always completely different. The minor dungeons are fun to explore, they usually hide away cool items that can then be useful on your adventure. Some of them even require specific items to be explored, so in that sense, you get a bit of metroidvania in here too. Zelda items like bombs, bomb shoes, and a deku leaf can be found, adding some new moves to your arsenal. Items aren't the only things you can unlock though. Abilities and bonuses can be found in the environment or even purchased from shops that use the rupees you've collected. They add some nice RPG flair to the overall gameplay. One sword might have one damage point for example, but then also have a wide 3 space swing, while something like a spear can have a long range vertical attack. It's fun to balance these things out and find your personal favorite for combat. 
Slowly over time, Link and Zelda feel like these amazing warriors equipped with fantastic weapons and abilities that make the combat so much more exciting. That becomes most apparent when you begin to dive into the boss dungeons and fights. Boss dungeons feel like grand skill versions of regular dungeons, complete with themed puzzles and multi-level parts to explore. They were certainly the highlights of exploration for me. Aside from being the home of these much larger boss fights that try to push you to use all your weapons and abilities, they also put together the best Zelda feeling parts of Cadence of Hyrule. If anything were to be improved, I think it'd be the boss fights that, while entertaining, didn't always put up much of a challenge. Cadence of Hyrule looks like a long lost Game Boy Advance Legend of Zelda game that's been updated for 2019. The sprite art style feels right at home for the series, both series in fact. It's absolutely lovely to look at whether I was playing on my TV or on the go with the Nintendo Switch. I personally enjoyed playing on the Switch's display more as the sprite work stood out to me more, coming off sharper on the smaller display. Something else I enjoyed a lot were the subtle touches of animation. The ripples in the bodies of water, the fog in the lost woods, and the smoke coming from a just defeated enemy were all beautifully animated. The overall presentation was a joy to look at throughout my time with the campaign. Music plays a very important part in Cadence of Hyrule. It's constantly present throughout the gameplay, pushing players to essentially dance along to the beat as you perform any action. It's that very reason that the soundtrack here should be catchy and I'm happy to report it delivers. You'll find a wide range of tracks here ranging from heavy rock versions of Legend of Zelda tunes along with some lo-fi remixes too. It's an interesting mix of genres that somehow manages to capture the magic of The Legend of Zelda while making them perfect songs to attach to the Necro Dancer gameplay. While it's always great to feature some more original songs, these remixes aren't bad by any means and truly do get into your head by the end of your first playthrough. Cadence of Hyrule isn't Zelda with Necrodancer, nor is it Necrodancer with Zelda elements. Instead, it feels like something completely new. It relies heavily on the Legend of Zelda universe and lore while using the gameplay mechanics of Necrodancer. In practice, it feels like a match made in heaven, a brief and short adventure that somehow perfectly balances both IPs. While it doesn't seem to lean on one series more than the other, I think those that love Zelda will find a unique but short adventure to go on, while those into Necrodancer will find one entertaining spin-off. 